You guys are then the team DIY, and one of the things I think I'm sure people remember are the glorious bombs. Yeah, yeah. That you uh, mm -hmm. that you got Bobby Roode in <laughs> compromising positions. <laughs> how did that How did that come about? Uh, it came out because maybe because I'm a psychopath. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, but it's funny. So going back to the Cruiserweight Classic. So we, if you, everyone remembers the Cruiserweight Classic, there was like this parade that they aired on, it might have been Facebook Live at the time, to where they were introducing all the competitors to the world. Like, this is this person, here they come. This is this person in the ring, here they come. So we were all up super late rehearsing that the night before. And they kept playing this theme song. And it was the glorious song for the rehearsals. So we all thought the glorious was the theme song for the Cruiserweight Classic. And we were like, this song's great, because we heard it like a million times that night. Like, we, we were all singing, like, Glorious. I, we were like, this is a great song for the show. We found out it wasn't the song for the show. It was the song for Bobby Roode. Uh, but by the time Bobby Roode got the song, we were like, oh, we love this song. So we came up with the idea of a glorious bomb. And I think literally one day, we were on, like, a road loop, and me and Tommaso were in an elevator. And we were like, what if we, like, do a glorious bomb? Because, like, photo bombs were, you know, a thing. Uh, where we just randomly play the glorious song, and we pan up. And Bobby, we're just, we approached Bobby Roode with the song. And he's like, yeah, let's try it. So we literally went to the gym. We all went to the gym. And we're like, hey, Bobby, we got this idea. Uh, we're going to play your song. Just be in the background doing something. And just look at the camera and acknowledge it. He's like, yeah, sure, whatever. And we do the first one. And it blows up online. And all the social media people are like, oh, my God, this thing's crazy. It's going viral. And honestly, I really think to this day, if the Glorious Bomb didn't happen, I don't think DIY would be as popular as they were. For some reason, the Glorious Bomb made people connect to us on a different level and got us way more popular. Because a lot of people don't know this, but the DIY thing wasn't supposed to last very long. DIY was supposed to be just a, a throwaway name because the turn was going to happen much sooner. Like, Tommaso was going to turn on me much sooner than he did. The DIY, Tommaso was going to turn on me after the first... Brooklyn takeover against the Revival. We are going to lose against the Revival. Toronto was never going to happen. We were never going to win the titles or anything like that. Uh, he was going to turn on me after Brooklyn. That's why, if you remember that time period, uh, the Brooklyn takeover of the Revival happened. I was, my knee was hurt. And the story was going to be, because if anyone watched it, during the Cruiserweight Classic as well, I wrestled TJP in the next round. And the story was going to be it's funny because it was filmed out of order. So if you were paying attention, you noticed. So when I wrestled TJP, I had a, a wrap over my leg. And I was like, my knee was hurt. And then he made me tap out because of my hurt knee. Uh, so we filmed that before the revival match happened. So I had a knee injury for no reason, if you were there live watching. Uh, the story was going to be the revival match happened. I hurt my knee in the revival match. I tapped out in the match with the Revival, because in Tommaso's mind, I wanted to save myself for the Cruiserweight Classic, if that makes sense. So I tapped out because I didn't want to get injured for the Cruiserweight Classic, which was coming up in a couple weeks. So that's why that was going to be his motivation to ultimately turn on me. Uh, obviously, the Glorious Bomb thing happened. The Revival match happened, which got rave reviews. Like, we were much better tag team than I guess anyone ever figured we were going to be together. And it was just some kind of magic feeling amongst all of us where they want to do Us and Revival again in Toronto. And I remember walking. We were doing like a Beyond Wrestling show, if anyone knows what Beyond Wrestling is. We were doing indies at the time. And I remember me and Tommaso were walking uh, to go do the indie show at that time because we still hadn't signed yet. And we both had this feeling, and we were like, man, are we going to win the tag titles? Like, are we actually going to win titles here? Because again, we were never supposed to be signed. We were told no. We were told it wasn't going to happen for us. And we went from that to maybe being tag team champions in NXT. That was like, just winning a title in NXT was like the, I can't believe we did that. That was so cool. That's so awesome. So I think that was a, it's a fun moment to look back on and think about how if the Glorious Bombs didn't happen, I think the turn would have happened much sooner. And uh, we might not have gotten the Toronto match with Revival either. I had always heard that if you were in the main event of WrestleMania, you're making seven figures. Easy. Like, no doubt about it. No doubt about it whatsoever. 
When I got the check, it was considerably less than that. Now, I don't want to say what it was because it was still a shitload of money, but it wasn't the WrestleMania payoff that I had always heard about. 